Okay, so uh, this uh, quick talk uh, is uh, targeted to people who use uh, GDB, so it should be everybody in this room, right? Um, the idea came from uh, a colleague that was debugging particularly large programs. It happens to be a, a, a project based on Clang, which has big libraries, but it could apply to any, uh, I guess GCC is considered uh, pretty big, or if you work on Firefox or Chrome, things like that. Um, you might know that loading uh, object files in GB can take a very long time. And one way to make this faster is to use an index, uh, which has been introduced a few years ago. So quick reminder about this index. Uh, it's something that can be generated either by, directly by, the, by the linker or that GDB can help you generate afterwards. And the goal is to make it faster to, um, to do name lookups. So the index will be essentially a list of which object files in your binary contains which names. So when GDB needs to search for a, a, a name for finding a symbol, uh, it will be much faster than uh, iterating on all the, the, the uh, these object files. So in the normal case, when this index is not present, uh, GDB does a first pass when reading the object, the, the binary, to to create some kind of internal index, which are called the partial symbols or p symbols. And this, when you load a, a binary in GB, that's usually what takes time. So if you have an index in your binary, uh, GB can entirely skip that step, and it's much faster to just get your debugging. Thank you. So uh, as I said, it might, might be created by the linker. Uh, I think only in the GNU tool chain, only the gold linker supports it. So if you want to use it, you have to switch linker uh, and add some, some flags. Uh, and in the GDB repository, there is the GDB add index script, which is distributed with GDB, uh, which basically generates the index and automatically updates your binary to, to have it. And the index is included as a section in the L file. Uh, the problem with those two things is that it requires a manual intervention from the user. And as a result, because not many people read the documentation and are not aware of it, uh, I don't see it being used very much. So it's only if somebody told you, hey, you should do that, then you use it. But people don't really discover it. So uh, this colleague gave me an idea that GB should do that kind of automatically, a bit like Ccache does for compiling. So you just run GCC through Ccache and it you never think about it again, then this is what this feature is about, So, which is already has been merged uh, this summer. Uh, all you need to do is, if you use GDB 8.2, which has been released, thanks Joel, uh, you can, uh, actually, I don't, I don't remember if it's in 8.2 or just after, but maybe 8.3. Uh, all you need to do is add set index, set index cache on to, uh, ideally, your GDB init file, so you don't need to do it every time. And what this does is, when GDB opens a file that does not contain an index, it will save the equivalent of that GDB index section in your, by default in your home directory, so in the .cache folder. And the next time GDB will load that same file, uh, it will first look up, is there an index in the file itself? No. Then it will look up in that directory, is there an index there? And if so, use it. So it's quite straightforward. Uh, the file name or the like, kind of the lookup is based on a build ID. So, uh, for example, I know that uh, Clang does not generate the build ID by, def by default if you work on the uh, on the Clang project. So you have to pass a flag to CMake to tell it I want to use a build ID. So it might be uh, just a little caveat. Um, but otherwise, I've been using that feature for almost a year because it was like I did locally and I didn't really have problem. And you basically enable it and forget you have it and just makes GDB faster. Uh, if there's already an index in your binary, so if your, tool, your workflow already includes generating an index, uh, GDB will not use that uh, uh, side index. Um, the advantages of that over the just generating the index manually, I think, is that you don't even need to change the build system. So if you just clone a project, an open source project you want to contribute to, you build uh, and you debug it with GDB, you'll have the index feature right away. So you don't need to find out where in the make file do I need to stick these flags or things like that. It just, just works. 
Uh, also, you only pay the cost of generating the index if you actually debug. So with the two other methods, uh, if you build you will, and you use, for example, GDB add index at the end, it will take maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds to generate an index, but you might not even debug that file. So you've just waited 30 seconds and to generate an index that you'll never use. So with this method, it's the first time you debug with GDB that you pay that price, and after uh, you get the benefits. Uh, you can also have in indexes for the binaries you can't modify. So let's say it's, you have binaries generated on some server and that you mount and uh, that have debug symbols and they don't have an index. Well, you could not add one normally if you don't have permissions. Then, but if with this method, this is in your home directory. Uh, if, I, if you have to think about the uh, disadvantages, uh, you wait a bit more time the first time you want to debug. So if you use it, you know you use the often the index often uh, for a project you contribute to a lot, then it makes sense to take the time to have the linker maybe generate it or have your at the end of your build do it. Uh, or for example, if, if it's in the CI, then you don't care if it takes 30 seconds more. Uh, but if you use this cache, then when you actually want to debug, you'll, you'll open GDB and then you'll have to wait, oh, right, it's generating the index. Uh, but it's not, it's not much longer than uh, just reading the file normally. Um, also, it might be a problem for some, but I don't think it's a big problem. Uh, it fills up a little bit. The, it takes a bit of space in the .cache folder, and debug info can become quite big with time, so it fills that folder a little bit. I mean, it's just one comment to remove those files, but... Um, and the possible enhancements for that I have planned, but I don't know if it will be before the GCC's wishes to get or after. Uh, I'd like to support Dwarf 5. So right now it uses GDB's own, GDB's own index format. Uh, and the problem with Dwarf 5 is that it generates two, in, two index files. And uh, it's just a, it was just a bit harder to, uh, to implement for the, the first pass, but I'd like to use it. And also, I'm just wondering if somebody knows what's the future of the GDB index format, since Dwarf 5 has essentially the same thing as it is standardized. Uh, is the GDB index format will be phased out or not? Um, something I'd like to do is uh, automatic cleanup. So like Ccache, you specify, uh, let's say you want to have one gigabyte of cache maximum, and when you reach that, it will start removing old files. Uh, that would solve the problem of filling up the cache folder. And eventually, if that works well, I like if we could make this a default, because as I said, people don't read documentation. So even if this feature, even if this feature uh, exists, uh, people won't know that they need to enable it through the set index cache on command. So they won't use it. But if it's a default, then people will just uh, benefit from it and uh, without having having to think about it, and they will just notice, hey, it's faster the second time I open the file. Uh, this raises some maybe some problems uh, because it could break some workflows. But uh, if we can find a way to make it work, it would be. I think it would be nice. So that's it. Thanks for your attention. And if you have questions, I think we have one minute, something like that, or more. It seems like a great idea. Did you think about creating it lazily to avoid the time penalty when you first engage it? Uh, what do you mean lazily? So you um, instead of going through and creating the whole index, um, build the index up in pieces as people request particular symbols. Um, so right now it's, it just uses the same method as when you generate the whole index to put in the file. So it, yeah, it creates the whole. So you would mean it only create the, the index files for those? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your suggestion. Well, maybe you're already doing it if you're only creating it per file. But basically, um, uh, defer the creation of the index until a, a symbol is requested. The, the uh, 
Okay, yeah, indeed. So the, in the whole of the index is used all the time because when you search, when you put a breakpoint on the hello function, break hello, uh, it needs to search in all the uh, compilation units. Is there a function that matches this? So we use the whole of the index all the time. So there's no real, I, th I don't think there's a, a way of saying, oh, we just need this part of the index. But I might be wrong. Thank you, Simon. Um, uh, we have to follow up with other questions afterwards. If we have spare time at the end, I'll get all the speakers up here and we can ask any other questions. Simon? <laughs>